Well, I'm back at the woodland workshop for 24 hours. It's all looking a bit dilapidated. I'm going to be mainly axe carving wooden spoons, I think. This pile of birch is nicely sported. So I'll cut some spoon blanks out of that, I think. First things first though, let's get a fire going and get the coffee on. Fire's pretty easy this time of year. Everything's dry. Firebox stove today. Heavy, chunky old thing, but it does work well. Well done, that little firebox go. Obviously it's got much bigger chamber than the wood gas stoves that I've got. Right, they've made me coffee. Got a lovely new grinder that came in the post today. A bit heavier than the old one, but works much better. Still fits in the handle of the AeroPress. And the other thing I've got is an axe sheath. This is my dad's old firewood axe, which I've sharpened up. And I bought a sheath off of Amazon. So I'll put a link to that in the description. But what I like about it is it also came with a belt loop so you can put the axe on your belt and walk about with it. Woohoo! So today we've got Kenya Kariga AA. Gooseberries and lime kick off this cup before it swings into the classic black currant finish we've grown to love. There's a delicate licorice on the end. But this is still all about the fruit. So what we've got? Gooseberries and lime, finishing off with black currant. Oh yeah, yeah, very fruity. Yeah, I'm getting the black currant and a little hint of the lime. I'm not sure about the gooseberry. Right. I'll finish my uh, coffee and uh, we better start knocking out some spoons. So I've got everything nice to hand. Got my axe on that side. Saw on this side. First aid kit there. Bopper. Plenty of wood. So let's go. Right. When you're battening, always have the axe 90 degrees to yourself. So as, as it comes out of the wood, it's going to go away from you or into the block, ideally, not towards you and into your leg. And as you see, I've got that knot right at the front. I'm going to put this on just the heart of the wood. 90 degrees to that heart to the center of the knot going outwards so it should split nicely see what happens oh yes nice split so that'll be one spoon because it's got a nice curve going that way, this will be the bowl and it will be a, what that be? That will be a tangential cut with the bark up. So when you look at it, this will be the bottom, this will be the top. So the bark will be up on the top of the spoon. So it's called a bark up spoon. So I'll axe into that, axe into that, put a bit of slope going down into the bowl and then come back that way tidy it up on both ends and then start shaping it. 
it's got some splits on the end so I need to come in an inch or two to about there cut it off about there and then we'll have a usable piece of wood yeah no splits so that one's good to go right I think we'll do the same with this one we'll cut it about there but I'm not going to bother with that one there I'm just going to use the back of this piece and then the front of this piece because this one's got a knot at the back as well so I'll get two pieces out of out of that because it's too knotty so I'll cut that split them two bits and then uh, I'll come back to you now I've got these two left with the knots in and what I'm thinking is that there's still quite a bit of wood here if I could split it out split it in half again radially so this would be a radial cut and then use half for one smaller spoon there and this half for another smaller spoon and where it goes round this knot as it comes to this knot it's either going to split that way or that way but I'm going to have to wax out the other half anyway so what it amounts to is that the split's going to come down and then the grain is going to come out round the knot and back in again so somewhere there is a is a nice bit of spoon crank with the grain following the shape so I'm going to try splitting both of these down trying to go straight through the knot but that won't happen but you know that's the idea again 90 degrees to myself and right through the heart of the wood and what that's given me like I said it had to go one side of the knot with the other so I'll axe that part out and I've got one sort of spoon there and the other one here it's just got a slight slight kink there you see it where it went around the knot so the knot would have been here so the wood's gone out round the knot and back up again so that's a that's how you would uh, make the maximum use of bits with knots in try and do the same with this one So again, split to one side and that does kind of give me a little bit of crank or if you're looking at it that way with the bar cap, a little bit of crank. So I split it radially but by the time that I, if, if I have it, the spoon parallel to the bark then it'll actually be a tangential cut. I've got a knot at the end here as well so I'll be cutting that off there probably cutting it off there somewhere maybe having the handle here and the bowl there so I just about get a bit of wood out of it is it worth it I don't know maybe not but I'm just uh, I'm just trying to show you how I would go about it and this one probably even less it's a big old branch there so yeah I'll probably something there to there I'll probably only use it up to there so I expect I'll end up cutting that one off so what we're looking for if you're out in the woods and you want, you want to carry some spoons home is you, you rough shape them like this you can see I've kind of followed the grain because this one this one went round a knot that was sticking out here so the grain's gone round a knot and I've shaped the handle a little bit and what I've tried to do is keep keep this and this in winding so it, it's not twisted so it's not one's going that way and one's going that way they're both level so you can see that by just looking down it roughly you know so then you can put a center line down there put your template on draw it out or just rough draw it on there whatever but you've got an idea of where the grain goes and this one unfortunately the grain goes a little bit off to the left so yeah it's not going to be perfect but I'll see what I can do with it now the other way of going about it is the same kind of thing you get your you get your log into winding 
by taking the outside off. You take the inside off where the heartwood was and you take the sharp edges off the sides and you end up with a eh, sort of a squarish block, sort of, I use the word very loosely. And this would be called a billet. And then you would take that home. That will dry nicely because all the wood's exposed and there's a nice bit of colour in there as well, you can see from the sporting. So that would be a blank, that would be a billet. It would be more of a blank if I had the shape on there and I'd axed it out to the shape, then that would be the perfect blank. But it is kind of a blank. It's, well, it's halfway between a billet and a blank, I suppose. So that's the kind of thing that I'm up to today. Now, I've not really been happy with the colour. It's been led on the ground for a while, but the old um, fungus hasn't really got into it. This one, I had it split, split in half and led on the ground under some leaves. So the ends haven't split, but you can see the fungus has really got in there on both ends. And it's really worked its way through. And uh, bring it up close. You can see there's reds, dark browns, yellows, golden colours, dark bits. This looks very promising. No knots in it. And it's got a bit of a whoosh so this is going to be my bowl and that will be the handle so let's see what i can do with that one and because the spaltings come from the underneath from the middle up from where it's been led on the ground which is kind of unusual really but you know i did it intentionally what i need to do is the sporting's going to be the most colourful near, near this middle split and it's going to fade away as it comes up to the top. At least that's what I think. But I'm going to axe into here and see what we got. And this will be my crank. I need to create some flats as well so as I, I can lay it onto the chopping block. Like that. Now I've got a, a two flats and I can hold it onto the chopping block and keep it more stable because I want to actually do that. And it's either going to swing and miss my legs or it's going to stick into the block. So I'm always thinking about where that where that axe is going to go. Because now I know, because I'm keeping the handle down low, that it's always going to stick into the block. So and there we go. See the colours? There. Now I think they're going to get darker as I go deeper, so I'm going to go a bit deeper. I'm going to take this handle off a bit first, so take a bit of height off of there. Now what I'm always looking at is trying to keep this all parallel all, all running in line so it's not it's got any twist in it in a carpentry term that's called winding it's the old-fashioned way of doing joinery when you did it with all hand tools so i'm just setting the crank in a bit deeper Oh, split off there. So we'll come in the other way. 
you've got to get used to doing it both ways really. not going on there. I think I need to work everything back a little bit. So I'm doing this rather than trying to take all the wood off at once I'm hitting an angle off, hitting an angle off and then taking the middle out. So there we go, taking the middle out. better. Now I've got to take some of this out because this is very heavy on the handle so I need to thin this back working up this way. And I'll, I'll do that by taking the angle off, taking the angle off, hitting the middle out, and then I'll start thinning down the handle on the actual plan view. Again, I'm keeping the handle low so it's always going to stick in the block. And if it doesn't, I've got one foot much farther forward than the other one. So the axe can always come and pass by the side of me if it does miss the block. But you can see that my handle is always very low. And this also imparts a slicing action as well because I'm hitting it off. So it's actually slicing the wood a little bit. can see I've got a so now it's easier because I've got less material I've got a point almost so I can hit that point off now yeah see I've done the same that side so I can hit that point off and it just makes it easier chopping all the time just taking the angles off Cut this knot out. And I've got a very spoony shape already. I can start cleaning this back up a bit. So I've got a big hump there. So 
I'm very close to my finger here, so I'm choked right up on the axe and I'm taking only little swings. I'm not really lifting it above my thumb. So, in theory, I shouldn't be able to hit it. Again, I'm keeping the handle really low so as it slices through the wood and if I miss it goes into the block. You can see I've still got a lot of weight in this part here so I'm going to take that out. I think I better draw something on there. If I know I'm going to be doing a few spoons I usually bring some templates along and a flexible ruler and what I like to do is you see these rings because I've done it bark side up it's a tangential cut bark side up so there's rings getting bigger and bigger so I can I can kind of judge where the center of those rings are this one looks like it's over that way a bit. Because the ruler is flexible, I can get it on there. Now people say they like drawing freehand because they can work with the with the wood, but if you've already axed out your rough shape then you can see what you've got and you are working with the wood even if you use a template you just pick the right template to suit the piece of wood that you've got and the more experience you get the more you know what shape to make it before you start and you get more templates and it's just it just evolves really so I mean this one this one's crying out for a something like that isn't it so I've axed it down to the line there and to that to the thick part of the handle there and I've put a saw cut in and what you need to do really is the thinner you make it in plan form the thicker you need to make it in the side view yeah so you've got that meat there and especially with spalted wood I've learned that over the over the years that Sported wood's a lot softer, so I've snapped an awful lot of spoons just on just on this thin piece here. So take your time, be careful. So what I like to do is take the angle off the front, the angle off the back, and then work down the middle. And if needs be, do it again. So use the wedge of the axe for this piece because if you go on through into this piece, into the spoon bowl, then you'll split it. Even if it's a micro split, as it dries, it will split off. So be very careful. Ideally, you want your axe to come through and come out of the wood and miss the bowl altogether. Take your time, small gentle strokes and 
as you get down closer to it, try to use the wedge of the axe to do the work. Yeah, pretty much like that. So you see I'm attacking it from all angles. Try to keep that piece in the middle intact. And keep a bit of thickness on there as well. It's easier to take it off with a knife or a draw knife. Right, now what I like to do is take some of these shoulders off. Because I'm going to be axing it round to this line anyway. So I can go quite thin here. But again, gentle cuts, otherwise we'll snap it across here. Try and get some support going as well if you can. You see, I'm doing the same again. I'm taking the angle off the top, the angle off the bottom, and then a bit off the middle. Gives you a lot more control. Same on the other side. Just take your time working down to it. And you see I've got a I've got a point there so I can from my final cuts I've still got a bit of meat left there. I can just finish that off with a knife. Just going to take a little tiny piece out of the handle because it's pretty thick still. I think that'll do. That's what you'd call a spoon blank. And I'm just sort of doing that with the other ones as well, really. Forgot a plate, so I'll be eating it out the frying pan. It works, doesn't it? Hmm, <laughs> that's pretty juicy. 
That's very tasty. Gone for a smudge fire tonight. So I'm burning mainly oak and getting lots of smoke. That's the plan. Keep all those nippy, bitey things away. Coffee. Coffee. I need coffee. better. Good morning. Well seems like that's the end of that. The axe gave me blisters because I'm not used to it. <laughs> Obviously it's got a different grip to it. So yeah it's typical. So I think that's the end of my axe carving for today. This is as far as I got. So knocked out a few blanks and a few billets. Like the shape of this one. Maybe still a bit chunky, but I'll work on it at home. Yeah, so did two of those. And uh, I think that one was going to be another one of those. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, I've done another axe carving video. I'll put a link to that up there. Thanks for watching.